So, Anthony, firstly, let's talk a bit about the statistics. Over 51.8% of the country voted for a Brexit, with just under 48.2% voted for a Remain vote. From a news perspective, were you surprised at the closeness of the results? Well, it was very close, but the thing is, months before, in opinion polls, it, it was very varied and it was changing every week about opinion about whether we wanted to stay in the EU or not. But I think the night before, it was certain, so certain that we was going to remain. So then to wake up to the news the next day um, and it actually tilted on its head. It was a massive shock factor, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah, and of course, then we have to talk about the subsequent political fallout. Cameron's resignation, the appointment of Theresa May, then came the sacking of George Osborne, Michael Gove, the appointment of Philip Hammond and Boris Johnson into the almost brand new cabinet. Was this the biggest constitutional crisis or do you think it was massively overplayed? I think it was massively overplayed and when you mm. look at it this was actually completely normal I mean David Cameron resigned so we had to have a new leader um, Theresa May um, and the others, Andrea Leadsom they all came forward and was saying that they wanted to be the next leader obviously now we've got Theresa May for the next four years I think she's been a bit clever actually with appointing um, Boris Johnson don't know there's we, we, in the madness. That, that's the thing We've everyone everyone doesn't know is it going to be a stroke of political genius or is it one of the biggest risks that is going to go downhill we just don't know no. but also again we talk about even more fallout Labour leadership that's not looking much better Jeremy Corbyn's leadership is also being challenged initially by two candidates before Angela Eagle drop, uh, dropped out of the race pulled out what do you think's next for the Labour Party? Well, again, it's just going to be one of those things over the next few months. I mean, for Jeremy Corbyn's position, it's very shaky at the moment, mm. with people in his own party voting that they've saying out loud that they've got no confidence in him. Mm. I'm so sorry, I'm trying to get my words out. In him anymore. It's an early um, morning, it's, it's an fine. early morning, it really is. Um, but basically, he's had like female MPs in his party wanting a tougher. Um, guidelines on them and their safety because they feel like they've been receiving death threats and all this unpleasantry mm. um, stuff going on. So mm. they want him to take a more hard line on that. And it's mm. whether or not, with his image of, of you know, being a, a leader that takes things seriously, but also being quite laid back, mm. how hard will he come down on people that seem to mm. threaten his MPs? Yes, of course. And... Um, We'll move on quickly from British politics to American politics, what I like to call the biggest reality show on earth, the American presidential election. I don't really know where to start, if I'm going to be honest. Melania Trump allegedly plagiarising Michelle Obama's 2008 Democrat National Convention speech, delegates prominently calling for the imprisonment of Hillary Clinton at the Republican National Convention, and Donald Trump is insisting if he is elected, he will build a border wall. Ted Cruz refusing to endorse Donald Trump. It's mania. It's it's political mania. Is this politics gone too far? Um, it would appear that way, but I think a lot of people at the moment are just looking mm. at America and thinking, OK, it's the last season of this thing called America. The writers are going nuts. They're just going insane. Mm. But I think Donald Trump at the moment is kind of softening his image slightly. Is he? He's uh, appearing... A lot of the I mean, American pundits are saying he's appearing as the kind of law and order candidate. I think so, but I feel that he has kind of pulled back a little bit. He's not coming across as insane as he did. I feel that as, the, as it's coming closer to, you know, deciding on the next president, I think he kind mm. of feels a bit... He's feeling confident. Um, he's, kind, he's got a lot of followers for the stuff that he <coughs> says. Um, and I, he actually came out and... Cos obviously they're all chanting, lock Hillary Clinton up. He kind of started the chanting. It's but terrible. Then, but it's then, terrible. I know. And then he came out and basically tried to then, you know, stop chanting this. So I think... Did he? Yeah, he actually did. Um, but but that, so that happened, which was a shock. But they were because they were kind of basically trying to get her, you know, indictment against her for using her own phone. I mean, the to... FBI called her careless, but they refused to um, indict her and bring up any prosecution against her. So, look, the Democrat National Convention is next week. It's an yeah. ongoing thing. If the conventions are anything to go by, this race is sure to be so, so interesting. It so, really is, and it's keeping journalists 
talking about this right It up is until keeping us on it our is, toes. It really is. And to think that we're going to have this right up until November, it's, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And mm. beyond, really, because can you imagine then, like, you know, to say Donald Trump is president of the United States and all the stuff that's going to happen from there. It's like, you don't know what's going to happen. Well, we didn't know what was going to happen with the EU referendum. So, no, the, and that's yeah. the thing. I think the world is saying that absolutely anything can happen when it yeah. comes to this race.